So we're back again, with yet again, another episode of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. In the last episode, we did quite the good introduction. We were introduced to Groos, who hid away our loft wing, and now we were just met with determination to go and find him. In this episode, we're going to win this wing ceremony. We're going to participate in the post-race ritual with Zelda, like I said we were going to do. But not before we're going to get this bug over here. Uh, if you're lucky enough, he does kind of spawn randomly outside this wall. You just got to go into a building and come back out. Uh, yep. Sky Stag Beetle. Uh, we couldn't catch him in the last episode because we had no net and he was flying around. So, hey, catch him here and you're good. Now, if you've made your way over to the Night Academy and in front of the sparring hall, all you got to do is make your way over here. Right where Instructor Horwell was when... You saved Mia, according to my knowledge. And just go right over in this corner. Hey. hey, LSP. Over here. I have some information about your loft wing. Come over here. As you wish. What's up? What's up, buddy? Yeah. Hey, LSP. I was just looking for you. I heard your loft wing has gone missing, so I thought I'd join in on the search. And get this, when I asked Fledge what he knew, he started acting weird. Mm. I'm so sorry, LSP. I really wanted to tell you, but if Groos found out I told you, oh what. It sounds like Groos forced him to keep quiet about it. Go on. Tell him the truth. <sighs> Just a little while ago, when I was cleaning the dining hall, Groos and his buddies came in. They didn't notice I was there and started talking about their plan to, lo to hide your loft wing. I wanted to warn you, LSP, but... Just as I tried to sneak away, Groose and his gang grabbed me. They said that if I told you, they would make sure that I would never be able to ride a bird ever again. Sounds like Groose and his buddies had a plan to capture your bird and hide him near a waterfall. Well, near a waterfall would mean... Quick, let's take a look at your map. That's it. Right there. I think it means the waterfall here, marked here with an X. Brilliant. Forgive me, LSP. I can't help being such a coward. I'm really sorry. Well, he apologized, so I guess accepted. Anyway, we want to go into the sparring hall, because we are going nowhere near that waterfall without a weapon of some sort. But all you got to do is go into this area. And I got to say, this training hall looks just similar to the one in Majora's Mask uh, in Clock Town, because there has logs. They have logs there, so. <laughs> but anyway, go in here and open up this chest. Um, you don't have to talk to him first, the trainer in the main room, but we get the practice sword. Students at the Night Academy practice with these. It looks like it has a fairly sharp blade. Yeah, yeah, but it is right here in our inventory, which is pretty neat. Notice we will be getting new swords a lot, so be mindful. <laughs> Go back out here, and we can talk to him. What's up, man? Oh, yeah. You want to learn about how to use a sword? Yes, please. And he's going to kind of go on a big rabbit trail about how to swing a blade. But anyway, you don't have to read that at all. Now, I will say, if you are using button controls only like I am on the Switch here, all you got to do is flick the stick on the right Joy-Con in either direction that you want to swing the sword, because uh, unlike Twilight Princess, where you can just swing no matter what, all you got to do is Z target and hold the direction with the joystick. You actually have to swipe in your desired direction without like, you know, Z-targeting or anything else. That's pretty cool. All you gotta do is press in R to do a stab attack. Just gotta do that there, and do a diagonal attack like that. Hello. There we go. You just wanna go ahead and stab that, and jump out of the way before it hits us. This looks like a downward swipe, and then a sideward swipe. Easy. That's right, LSP. You really are a strong swordsman. Easy to teach, too. You make this instructor proud. Are you ready to try a spin attack? Why not? Great. Now I'm going to surround you with logs. Use a spin attack to cut them all without moving from that spot. All we got to do is just do that and... What's the matter? D I, I screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up. <laughs> I screwed up. D want to yes, please. I was doing wrong, like, on purpose. That was the plan. Anyway. There we go. It, it, I, 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 I just did it. I, I did it. That sure looked like it felt good. So, why don't you try a fatal blow to close out our session? Why not? And not mess that up. 
All right, when your enemy is down, target it with the ZL and throw yourself at it to land a fatal blow. Do a side slash on that log. When it's down, try finishing it off. Yeah, I will try finishing it off. They brought back the fatal blow, or the ending blow from Twilight Princess, when you learn it from the hero shade there, but we actually learn it here in the Night Academy. Or the sparring hall, that is, but still. Fatal blow. Generic. That's the way. A fatal blow is also an effective move to use right after you used your shield or a well-placed spin attack to knock, an to knock an enemy on its back. Oh, but monsters don't stay down for long, so you'll have to land that fatal blow quick before they get back up. And if we actually try to leave, he will say... Hey, LSP. You can't take swords out of outside of the sparring hall. What do you think you're doing sneaking out with that? I want to go defend my loft wing, please. <laughs> what? Your loft wing is missing. You want to go look for it? Well, I guess I can make an exception just this once, but remember, that Skyloft is a peaceful place. Only knights carry swords. So I don't want you I don't want to see you swinging it around like crazy out there. I don't want to get in a ton of trouble over this, so here's the deal. Make sure you get plenty of practice on these logs first, and once you get outside with that sword, only use it when you absolutely have to. Got it? He sounds... he thinks that I'm gonna betray everyone with the frickin' sword, like... Anyway, since we have some means of protection, we have to make our way and make a beeline to that waterfall. So what do we do? Well, we gotta go out that gate that we used to get to the Night Academy. And all we gotta do is just kinda trolley along this way. And I gotta say, having a sword is like nice enough even though it's just practice it's very similar to the wind waker for sure <laughs> gotta learn to get one and they just give you one anyway roll on up here you can actually chop these pots open ideally two blue rupees would pop out but hey only one did and bugs will kind of like reappear uh, that is a mantis and we can't catch him because uh yeah we have no net it's a lot easier that way <laughs> so just be aware uh yeah so having a sword is pretty nifty now all we gotta do is head down this way toward the waterfall. And there is a box that you can just kind of push to the wall here. But, hey, no rush though. Just do this whenever you want, but I'm just gonna do it now and get it over with. I'm just gonna go ahead and hop down. And funny enough, there is a statue just to the left of these uh, stepping stones in the water uh, that we can't really do anything about just yet because we have nary the resource to help this statue, but it has one eye, one eye only. And this guy says, Oh, look at this thing. Who knows how long the statue's been here? And it only has one eye, poor thing. You probably know this, but you can press up to look around. Well, I just did. I, I only did. I, I just did, because I understand the thing, and you don't. Anyway. Uh, funny enough, we can go to the waterfall cave, and I want to say something funny here, actually, after this cutscene, because it just kind of dawned on me now, because... Yep, our Bloftwing is there, but in the Wind Waker, we had to get a practice sword, chop down trees to go into a cave, and here we have to do the same thing. Easy. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but make your way in. No biggie. And the Waterfall Cave. So, funny enough, uh, as well, this is a place that you can very easily return to when it comes to getting a treasure, uh, which you can use to upgrade your items of many kinds, and I'm just getting many things for the first time. Uh, more importantly, we want a jelly blob and a something called a monster claw. Ideally, you get those from Keys, which are the flying bats in the air, but if you go ahead and break in that fence there, and go ahead and open this chest, you get 20 bucks. Not bad. Go ahead and jump, jump on down. And I gotta say, the chews in this game are, like, a lot more aggressive, I gotta say. This here is called a Firefly of some kind. I forgot the exact name for it, but uh, he's not needed, like, ASAP, but just know that you can get him anytime that you have a net. So, when I return here, that's something that I'm probably going to do. Going to do. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Monster Claw. See what I'm talking about? The chance of this dropping is pretty rare, but there is also something called a Treasure Metal, which if you hold it, it actually doubles your chance of enemies dropping a treasure from them. So that's pretty nice as well. Um, fill that keys there. Yeah, he didn't really drop anything, but... Open that chest right there. And another 20 rupees. It's a lot. Anyway, you can go ahead and jump on down. And there's gonna be lots of rupees this way. Uh, any... Any jelly blobs out of you guys? I don't think I... Got one yet. Nope. No jelly blobs. Go ahead and run our way on up. 
What's going on in here? There we got a couple more keys to take on out here. Yeah, you gotta hit him twice in this game, which is kind of funny with the practice sword. Uh, no monster claw. Yeah. Anyway, the majority of the money is right here. It's a nice 40 rupees. We have a total of 138, which isn't bad. And we can go ahead and exit. All right, and we have a nice little bird statue here, which we can we can have the option to save at right now, but I'm not going to until my until I'm certain that my recording has gone well enough. But LSP. Hey, LSP. I was hoping I'd find you here. I heard you'd gone searching for your bird around the waterfall, so I thought I'd fly around and help you look. How's your search going? Any sign of your luffling? Oh no. Well, let's not lose hope yet. There's a place up ahead that Groos and his gang are always hanging around. Maybe we'll find something there. Huh? Who? Who's that? Who's calling for me? Oh. Sorry, LSP. I got distracted for a moment. Let's go. And believe it or not, this is like the one and only time in Skyward Sword, no spoilers, but... This is like the one and only time that Zelda follows us around. For now, that is, but hey, it is what it is. Look, there he is. No doubt about it. That's your loft wing, LSB. Looks pretty crimson to me. <laughs> Go ahead and chop open these barrels here. Go ahead and cut open these planks. Knock them on out of the way. Chop it on down. We should hurry, LSP. Now that your loft wing is free, you should fly to the ceremony. But before you go, I have to ask you something. I... I heard this voice a few moments ago. Did you hear it too? It's been happening a lot lately. It's the strangest feeling. Almost like someone is calling out to me. Have you ever wondered what's beneath the clouds? Some say that it's an empty, barren place, or even that there's nothing all down below, but I just have this feeling that they're wrong. Some of Father's old texts talk about a place called the surface. The old tales describe a whole world under, under there, far more vast than Skyloft. The thing is, no one's ever been down there to see it, and our loft wings won't fly through the cloud barrier. But I can't help imagining the wild things that might be waiting below. Someday, I want to see for myself. Oh, sorry, LSP. We don't have time to talk. Let's get going. Look, your bird's waiting for you. you sleep off the edge and press down. Don't worry about falling. Your bird will sh catch you for sure this time. So welcome to the flying tutorial. Uh, you can feel free to read this at your own time, but it, it does feel nice to kind of, you know, revisit this on the Switch, even like three years after its release here, but hey. Uh, Zelda just basically wants to make sure that her loft wing isn't hurt or anything after being trapped for a good while, but anyway, we can actually get a good dive up and just do a good old fast dive like that, and I gotta say, on the Switch, it just feels magical. And it's, and it's just great. How's he handling? I think he's pretty good. Uh, we can steer with the L stick. And ascend with A. Generic. 
And I must say that I think that uh, the Switch does cater to anybody who wants to try different experiences with the controls. Motion controls or buttons only does not matter. It all depends on you. So that's just great. I love it, and I, I think that, it, that they were just really generous to uh, put out this idea for sure. Because the Wii version did kind of like lock the player into one decision. Motion control, which I don't think that everybody really agreed with, but still, <laughs> it happened. I think the Wii version is still a nice, you know, introduction to this game. It's, hey, I guess I can see why people have opinions for the most part. Well, it's a huge relief. I don't know about you, LSP, but your left wing looks like he's flying great. My father and the others are probably worried about your bird, so let's go give them the good news. <laughs> your left wing really is amazing, especially considering everything that the poor guy's been through this morning. I bet, man. <laughs> I'm gonna go fly back and tell father what happened. Well, well, if it isn't LSP. Word around the plaza is you found that dumb bird of yours. Well, that's just great, because you because you and your dumb bird can't tell time. All the Paris warm-ups me and the guys did were for nothing. Now I'm all stiff. We've been waiting forever for the race to start. And they delay it for you? I don't get it. The big flake gets the special treatment. You're almost a man, and you still can't seem to go anywhere without Zelda. I bet you can't even decide what to have for lunch on your own. Huh? And don't think we haven't noticed the smug looks. Ooh, Zelda and I are best friends. We go everywhere together. Ugh. You think you're pretty suave, don't you? Well, don't you? Groose has been going on forever about he's gonna about how he's gonna be the one to be with Zelda. He's really got his pump door in a ruffle about her. Oh, they're her. <laughs> He gives me a Phineas and Verb but and Phineas and Ferb vibe, it's ridiculous. Stretch. I hate to break it to you, but today is the day that I bust out this adorable little fantasy land that you're living in. Zelda's playing the role of the goddess at today's ceremony, and I'm gonna be the one to claim that sailcloth. When I heard she made it herself, man, no way I was gonna let some scrawny clown snatch that prize from me. Oh yes, that sailcloth. Zelda sailcloth. Will be mine. The sailcloth designed to be for Zelda. Zelda sailcloth. All right, Kronk. Enough. Oh man, I bet she was thinking about me when she was stitching it. Yep, I can see it now. First, I win the big race, and then Zelda and I finish the ceremony together on the statue. Just the two of us. It'll be our special moment alone. Nobody's stopping me and Zelda from having our moment. Oh, it's so real. I can, I can see it. Oh, they're her. Oh, yeah. Groose. Psst. Groose. Behind you. Right behind you. What? Can't you see I'm in the middle of... Oh! <laughs> it's such a freaking Hank Hill moment, I swear. <laughs> Care to explain just what you meant by our special moment alone? Oh, yeah. Nothing big, really. Just... Just... LSP, yeah, I was just telling my buddy here how glad I was that he found that red bird of his. Boy, am I looking forward to a fair race. Anyhow, later. Later, Zelda. Look for me during the race. I'll be the one pulling off all the dangerous moves. <laughs> hey, Groose, wait up. Did you hear that guy? A fair race. Yeah... The chances of that happening are just about less than zero. Either way, don't let those fools get you down, LSP. Just get out there and fly the best you can. I know you've got these guys beat. And deep down, I think you do too. Us? Alone? <laughs> Not even gonna sing that song. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. That's the spirit, LSP. Trust me, you can win this. The wing ceremony will now begin. Participating students, please assemble. Looks like it's race time. Good luck, LSP. Hey! 
Your attention, please. At last, we are ready to begin the wing ceremony. I was beginning to worry that we'd have to continue without LSP, but luckily, that is no longer a concern. I'm glad you could all make it. Before we start, I'll explain the rules for today's competition. I've attached a small statuette to this bird, who I will then release to the skies. On my signal, dash from the starting line and dive off the ledge. Once you are, once you are in the air, mount your loft wing. Remember to call your bird promptly with down once you dive off the edge. Whoever catches the bird and claims the statuette will be this year's champion. Those are the rules, simple enough. I should think. But do you need to hear them again? <laughs> that is a just a Kapora Gabora moment, I swear, but... Given if I was Groose, I would definitely need to like have those rules beaten into my head, regardless of who I was, but... No, I'm good. Excellent. As you well know. Today's champion will graduate to the next class, bringing him one step closer to knighthood. He will also receive a gift from the young woman chosen to play the role of the goddess in this year's ritual. Today is a special day for many reasons, but it is also the 25th anniversary of our fine institution. To celebrate the occasion, today's champion shall also receive his gift high atop the statue of the goddess. I hear the young woman performing the role of the goddess this year has crafted the gift herself, and as you all well know, the role of the goddess this year will be performed by... <laughs> the lovely Zelda. <laughs> Let's see if you're finest flying out there. Show me just how hard you've been practicing. Also, I want to see good, clean flying. Anyone caught interfering with other riders will answer to me. Cool. That goes double for you, Groose. Hey. Alright, gentlemen, line up. At my command, the competition will begin. go. We're gonna dust him. <laughs> anyway, it, honestly, if you've played this on the Wii, and you've been, like, like pounded with, like, the first 40 plus minutes of the game, like, preparing for this, this is, like, the longest minute of the game to you, pretty much. Just preparing for this one minute competition. It's really not that hard. All you gotta do is get a high enough dive, and all you gotta do is press A near the statue, and it, it's just easy. It's easy. Now, Groose will say, hey, don't you know this is my day to get all the glory? Shove. <laughs> yeah, you heard him. Let's see how good you fly with egg on your face. You know, Instructor Alwyn just got done saying less than a minute ago he will, you will have to answer to him if you caught interfering with other riders. And that even counts if you're trying to play against Groose, your own friend, but... All I gotta do is just dodge the eggs and press A next to the statue, and it's honestly the easiest thing in the world. It's... It's laughable. You got the bird statuette. It proves your victory today. Wait till Zelda sees this. <laughs> LSP. <laughs> Don't worry. I'm fine. <laughs> Great flying, LSP. Congratulations. Now we'd better get on with this ceremony. LSP, hand me that bird statuette you grabbed in the race. I must offer it to the goddess. Great goddess, guiding light and protector of our people, grant us your blessing and mercy as I act in your stead during this ceremony. Valiant youth who grasped victory at the celebration of the bird folk in accordance with the old ways, I now bestow the blessings of the goddess upon you.
the blessings of the goddess drift down from the heavens aloft a sail, which I now pass on to you. You got the sailcloth. Now you can jump from any height without a, without fear of a painful landing, and without Zelda pushing us off of a ledge again. That better not happen again, Zelda. It smells nice, too. Oh my gosh, Nintendo was really going that far. Man, it just never gets old. LSP, quit goofing. This is supposed to be a sacred ritual, remember? You know, they say that the goddess gave the sailcloth to her chosen hero long ago. Of course, the one you're holding isn't the same one. I've been working hard to finish making the sailcloth in time to give it to today's champion. I'm really glad I got to give it to you, LSP. Make sure you take good care of it. Okay? Thanks for making it up here to do this with me today, like you promised, LSP. Now we really should finish up this ritual. You do know what happens at the end, right? Uh, not really. <laughs> uh, I know what you're all thinking. If anybody who's watching has not played Skyward Sword and just doesn't know what's going on, and if you whatever you're expecting just is not the truth, sort of. <laughs> I'm glad you're so in well informed on the subject. We have to jump off the statue. <laughs> we have to jump off another ledge. Look down. See that big round design on the courtyard below? To finish the ceremony, you need to jump right down to the center of it. Leap off the edge here. Right before you hit the ground, press ZR to open up your sailcloth. Just how brave are you? If you really were fearless, you wait until the last second to use your sailcloth. So, ready to jump? <sighs> her and her obsession with just pushing me off of things, it's ridiculous. But all you gotta do is just deploy like that. <laughs> that was perfect. You're amazing, LSP. You know, LSP, seeing as how you won today, and with the weather being so nice, you think maybe you'd like to, you know, go fly around the clouds together? LSP? Hey, LSP. Today was amazing. Watching you win the race and performing the ritual together. I'll always remember this. I really was wonderful. You know, LSP... There's something I've been meaning to talk to you about. What is that? What's going on? LSP. I am waiting for you. The time has come for you to awaken. You are vital to a mission of great importance. LSP.
Oh, you're awake. When your loft wing carried you back, you were limped and unconscious. I feared the worst. Fortunately, you don't appear to have any serious injuries. For that much, we can be grateful. But LSP, where's Zelda? She was with you, was she not? What's happened to my daughter? A black tornado, you say? Hmm. That was no ordinary storm. <laughs> you must not push yourself. You are still recovering. Tell me, when you saw Zelda today, did anything about her seem... off? I see. She was talking about the surface, then. And you've been having dreams about a great mission. How interesting. I'm sorry. I was lost in thought there for a moment. It's all very strange, but I doubt there's much of a connection between these things. I'm concerned for Zelda, but so long as she's with her left wing, I'm sure she'll be fine. Either way, Daybreak has yet to arrive. It would be very difficult to spot one girl and her bird in the dark of night. It would also be very dangerous. Rest now, LSP. Zelda's going to be fine. She's out there alive. I know it. So at this point of the game, it really did uh, bring to life the atmosphere that you actually come across, and as well as how great the music is for the most part. It's really remarkable. You get to walk out here and really acknowledge how like eerie it looks at night in the Night Academy. But hey, it does look great with the lights being on, of course, with this atmosphere. And getting accustomed to this companion was really the most you know challenging part to me. But hey. Considering that the last companion that I really knew about was Midna from Twilight Princess back before I, this game came out for the Wii, uh, it really took some getting used to, for sure. That I'll say. And the fact that people say, oh, we really don't do things at night in Skyloft, but look how wonderful it looks. Like, seriously, if you lived in a sky village for a living, and... You were obliged to not do things at night. It was just... That's weird. I'm not saying it's bad, but it would just be, like, strange for you to, like, not at least sit outside and enjoy the nighttime. Jump down here. And... Go forward. So, this part really scared the behebes out of me back when I played it for the first time, but... Um, you can just do this over and over, and it will not hurt Mia at all. Like, at least the demon version of her. We can go ahead and pick her up, and she'll be fine. She's just, you know, she'll probably run away. Ouch. Hey, stop. You're just, you're, you're just petting her. You're not hurting her at all, so the game would not go that far, trust me. It's just not about to happen with them. But 20 more rupees, and you should be good to go. Any jelly blobs out of you, buddy? No, I don't think I don't think so. Stay down there, Mia. I know you want to come up and cuddle, but it's just not going to happen. I'm on a mission. <laughs> anyway, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and allow this music to play because it's just the best song to me ever in the game, in my opinion.
Well, as much as it pains me to end this episode here, I'm going to have to. But in the next one, we're going to see what awaits the Statue of the Goddess and find out what our next mission is. With that, hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned. Subscribe, like, comment, or anything else. And peace out, everyone.